So next we'll talk about the QL algorithm, which is another extension of the K-means algorithm to handle clusters of arbitrary shapes. Previously, we have talked about the BFR and K-means algorithms, but the problem with these algorithms is that they assume the clusters are normally distributed in each dimension and axes are fixed. So basically ellipses at an angle, for example, like this one, are not okay for this algorithm. Therefore, if you look at these two examples, if you want to cluster points on the left, it might probably work for this BFR and KMIS algorithm. But since in the example on the right, since it has some ellipses at an angle, the K-means algorithm and the BFR algorithm probably won't work. So the Q algorithm, which stands for clustering using representatives, assumes a Euclidean distance and allows the clusters to assume any shape. And it uses a collection of representative points to represent the cluster. So you can see that now we can use these representatives to handle any shape. For example, let's say that each of these points represent the age and salary of a lot of staff in some university. And the E means these are the staff for the engineering department and H means these are for the humanities department in the university. And naturally they have two clusters. One is for the engineering department and the other is for the humanity department. And Ideally, we would want to automatically find these two clusters. But as you can see, these two clusters are actually definitely not normally distributed. Therefore, both K-means and the BFR algorithms won't work. But actually, it's act this actually is very difficult for any clustering algorithm because there is a significant overlap between these two clusters. But at least we will hope to find one small cluster here and the other one small cluster here and a third cluster here. And we hope that a QR algorithm can help us do that. So how does a QR algorithm work? It is actually a very simple two-pass algorithm. And in the first pass, we'll just pick a random sample of the points that fit in the main memory. And then we will find some initial clusters. For example, we will cluster these points hierarchically using the agglomerative hierarchical clustering algorithm that we mentioned before. And we'll just group the nearest points and clusters iteratively. And then we will pick the representative points. For each cluster, we'll pick a sample of points and we want them to be as dispersed as possible. For example, we can, as we mentioned before, we can just randomly pick the first point and we pick the second point that's, that is as far away as possible from the first point. And then we will pick the third point that's as far away from the first two points as possible and the process goes on. And from the samples we pick, we can then pick the representatives by moving them for example, at 20% toward the centroid of the cluster. So we can see that the representatives is uh, actually not the original point, it's actually some synthetic point that we created that are closer to the centroid. For example, let's say that these are the initial clusters from the Q algorithm. Then we will, for this cluster, if we want to find the representatives, we'll first pick, we well, only pick one point here. And we'll pick the second point that's the, the most far away from the first point. And we'll pick the third point and the, and the fourth point. And then we'll move these four remote points about 20% towards the center. And we say that these two points are the representatives for this cluster. And we'll do the similar things for these other two clusters. Then in the second pass, we will just rescan the whole data sets and we'll visit each point P in the data set. And for each point P, we'll just place it in the closest cluster 
And normally we can define the closest as to find a closest representative to P and then assign it to the representatives faster. For example, the, if the P is here, then the closest representative will be this one. Then we can say that the P actually belongs to this cluster. So to summarize, in this lecture, we talked about the problem of clustering, which is to give given a set of points. And with the notion of distance between the points, we want to group the points into some number of clusters. And we talk about some algorithms for the clustering problem. We cover the agglomerative hierarchical clustering, and we talk about centroid and clustroid. We also introduce k-means algorithm, and it's two extensions, BFR and Cure. BFR mainly handles a case where we have very large data set that can't even fit in my memory. And Cure mainly handles a problem where we have clusters of arbitrary shapes. 